You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is about unschooling, and we've talked about unschooling before on the podcast, um, but I'm very pleased to be able to talk um, in this episode with unschooling parents who have, have made that decision. And so I'd like to welcome the guests to the show this week, Matt and Molly. Hi, Matt. Hi, Molly. Hey, Jake. Hi. <laughs> welcome to the show, and thanks so much for agreeing to uh, talk about your experiences. Our pleasure. If you hear any chickens or giant tortoises in the background, uh, because we live on a, a bit of land here and we have quite a few pets. Awesome. <laughs> Added sound effects. That's great. Yes. Um, so, um, yeah, really, really interested to to hear um, you know your experiences. Uh, we met um, a year ago in in California when I came out to to San Diego. And as you know, I, I we don't have kids yet, but I'm very, very interested to hear about your experiences on schooling and I think it's also useful for other people who who might be thinking about this um, but before we get into that I think it might be helpful just just as a background to give people a little bit of a picture of your backgrounds and and sort of where you are um, so you you, you live uh, together in in California and and uh, is that where you both are from originally <laughs> I'll take this. Yeah, I'm here with Molly, and and we actually met in Chicago, and the kids were born there, and we were we came out here uh, five years ago. Uh, this was our western suburbs for Chicago, right. uh, and uh, we have uh, a nine-year-old daughter and a six-year-old son. Uh, I am from California. I had gone out there for graduate school and stayed and. Uh, was a trader on the floor of an option exchange, and now I run my own business that's related to that. And Molly uh, was from Wisconsin and Minnesota, so that's our bit of our background. Awesome. And you now um, live, uh, as you said, on on some land. And and Molly, do you uh, do you work yourself, or do you stay home, or what, what's your situation? I am home with the kids and the pets. Right, right. Great. Well, um, I'd really like to hear about um, your experiences. And, and I guess one place to start is to just ask, you know, what, uh, what led you to think about um, making the move to unschooling? Because as far as I understand, you know, this is not the way that you started out um, with, the, with your kids. Did they, did they start out in school? They did. They started off in Chicago. We found this lovely little Montessori school, and uh, we started our school experience with kind of probably the most idyllic situation ever. Uh, one room school with one woman who owned and ran it, and she greeted the kids at the door every day with a handshake and a lovely greeting. Right. So, nightly, we thought that that was kind of what school was all about. Mm. Um, and quickly found out that that was that was a very 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 special situation that probably wouldn't have, wouldn't be replicated again for us. Right. And then uh, we came to California and entered a Montessori school, and, it, and Montessori is nice because it does transfer pretty well. The same the same child size things are there, and you can uh, they they got right right into it but you know what happened and I was actually on the board of uh, of that Montessori school but it, it did go south you know it's a, we're in a very small community and they couldn't get the numbers right especially when Lily was getting in, in up in the years for uh, in junior school so uh, her school actually closed and we kind of looked at each other and said uh, time to homeschool. <laughs> right. <laughs> we've right. been threatening to do. It, uh, I say always, we've been threatening to do it for years. Like philosophically, we. I thought it was the right thing to do. We just um, were thrust into it. Right. At right. the last. And did you? Um, is you had you and sort of encountered other people who had uh, taken that route um, 
who you could talk to about this? I mean, did you did you know homeschooling or unschooling families? Uh, well, what, there is a very good Yahoo group presence in our area, right? And so uh, that was actually very helpful for us because we we really didn't know exactly what we were going to do. We we started off as many do. Uh, well, we're going to have this curriculum, and we're going to start uh, doing this and this and this. And quickly, our kids kind of communicated to us that that wasn't really the way it was going to be successful. Right. Right. And so it's been, how long have you been unschooling now? Just one year. We just completed our, our first, first year. year. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so and, and I should say, yeah. I should say, Jake, that... Um, you know, we started off with, with best intentions of, you know, replicating our school experience and getting the, all the facts and knowledge over to our kids. And, and you know, we, we uh, sat down with our curriculum and, and you know, our kids were kicking and screaming, basically. Oh, yeah. I, the, I think the reason we, we've done a lot of reading about unschooling and it, it sounded really great in theory for other people to do. Right. <laughs> but then... I thought, you know, I need structure, I need some guidelines, I need I need a curriculum. But then when I put that into practice with the kids, they uh, actually made them cry every day. Mm. And I thought, wow, this is really not what I, I intended. And uh, my little our little boy said, Mom, you're my mom, not my teacher. I want my mom. I don't want a teacher. And I had to sit back and say, wow, I, this, is, this is wrong. I'm doing something really wrong. So we scrapped everything, and we just completely went school unschool and uh it's been great ever since wow and molly had molly had an acquaintance that had done unschooling and when she when molly told this person about the experience she said oh no if you're not having fun you're doing something wrong so we right. kind of like that approach yeah. yeah that was the best piece of advice i think i got when i was first starting out she said if you're stressed out you're doing something wrong you're not yeah. doing it right and so how long was it into, you know, your um, homeschooling uh, sort of a, a first approach with the whole, you know, uh, have lessons and stuff that your kids really, you know, made that clear? <laughs> I think it was about two weeks. Right. Okay. Last six weeks. Yeah. Right. It was really, really fast. <laughs> cool. And um, are the kids... You know, uh, what what do you think? Um, obviously, I'm asking you to speak for them here, but, but um, what do you think they? How do you think they find the experience? Well, it's pretty easy us easy for us to speak for them, Jake, because we, we have such an open and great relationship with them, where that we're with them so much that we could answer this. Uh, you know, there's still some shocks when when you ask them pointed <laughs> questions, but. I actually did, uh, you know, talk to Lilia, and and we talked to them daily about what, what was their favorite thing and and what was their worst thing and such. But uh, when I asked Lily about it, just and she goes, "It's the best decision that I've made." I like, I'm happy with the decision that I've made. Uh, <laughs> and Ben goes, "I like it." So uh, so they're finding it very well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And um, yeah, what. You know what? How do you? How have you found the experience so far? It's the best decision we've ever made. Uh, once we threw the curriculum out the window, uh, it, it, everything just—the relationship that we have with our kids deepened. I've seen growth in them that I never thought possible within one year. Just personal growth, and mm. um, it's fun. It, we have fun every day. We laugh every day. Mm. We're finding it. Uh, it's chal- I mean, there are several challenges that. You, to face, but it, it, ultimately, it is the best decision we, we could have ever made. That's awesome, and I did want to ask you about challenges because you know, uh, like I think, especially for people who are thinking about this, this is something that they'll really want to um, hear from from people who've had uh, this experience. You know, what what, did, what have you found the uh, the biggest challenges so far? Uh, the facing the world, <laughs> I think. When you announce to people that you're unschooling, you get that kind of strange look (laughs) and the questions begin. Um, So you have to be really confident. I think you have to have a good sense of self, good self-knowledge and a good relationship with 
you know, with your partner to make it work and to face the world, you, it's, it's, it takes a lot of courage. Uh, I think people have a vested interest in seeing us not succeed right. in doing something that's so, so far outside the box. Um, so that's pretty, that's challenging, you know, seeing your friends and family kind of look at you like you're a crazy person. Um, just starting is the biggest challenge. For me, the, the only challenge really was starting. And then once, once you're in it, you're in it. And um, you're just, there you are. There's nothing more challenging than taking the first step. And I would just add, Jake, that it's when you're un- unschooling, and I don't particularly like the word. I think we're just being with our children and, and mentoring them and, and helping them get to the person that we hope they could be. Yeah. But it's such a mirror. Like you see yourself, and you know, if they get in an argument and they use something uh, in, in irrational, in, in a rational argument, you go. Okay, they must have gotten that from me somehow. So, what does that mean about me? Right. I mean, that's a difficult thing to have have this mirror right there. And I, um, so that's uh, you know, in addition to what Molly said, I think uh, you know, you need you need to have the confidence, but really, you just need to want to do it, love your child, and know that, and be confident that it really is a natural thing and a, and a very good thing to do. Yeah. I also could add that the. Um the, the onus is on the parents. Since we don't have a curriculum and we don't have a, a guideline of any kind, it's a, another big challenge is just figuring out what to do with your day, how, how to structure your day. And ours are largely unstructured. We, we've joined a co-op we, that we adore. Moms get together and teach the kids. And we've gotten, we, we do classes. We do a lot of things outside just staying at home mm. that you have, you have to seek out. But to finding all of that is the tough stuff, making sure that you're exposing your kids to enough that they feel challenged and excited and, and, and then taking every little piece of, of interest, any spark that you see with them, and then expanding upon that, making that a learning experience without being that teacher that my son wanted to send away. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Molly, I wanted to come back to something that you said that I think is, is really important about the challenges, about you know, the, the sort of uh, judgment that you receive from others and uh, for making this decision. Because I know that, you know, it is such a, such a deeply embedded idea that, you know, the thing that you must do as a parent is ensure that your child gets, quote, an education, unquote, you know, and that school uh, is what is, is what is done and being outside school is kind of uh, irresponsible it's kind of wacky and unusual and so forth and I think you know I'm, I'm sure that um, that it's quite psychologically challenged, challenging to go against that very very embedded um, idea that is all around us and I'm sure um, you two both grew up, grew up with so you know, can you talk a little bit about how you guys managed to, you know, find the courage to go for it? Yeah, that's you. <laughs> um, you know, how do we find the courage to go for it? Well, I can relate. I may not answer that perfectly, but I can relate a couple stories that are interesting. I, I think that when I started to tell my friends what I was doing, one of my good friends, probably one of my better friends, um, said, hey, I've got to be really honest with you. I, I kind of hope that you fail because if you succeed, it means that everything that I'm doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. And while that was a, that stung, I also appreciated her honesty so much because I think that that's the way a lot of people feel, but mm-hmm. they'll never tell you. And I thought it was really beautifully honest that she said, she said it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I think you can pretty much count on that's, that's the overarching thought uh, for most people when they find out that's what you're doing so I think it's fear and I think it's fear because it is such an unusual thing to do so I, I empathize with with that feeling but um, and then Jake I, I would have said you find the courage because you see that it's working and, and right. you also find the, the courage from you know, you know all that we've been learning you know listening to your podcast Steph uh, school sucks. 
Wes Bertrand's Complete Liberty. It's you know, it's a Peter Gray, and I think you have to go and and read a little bit, mm. listen to other people that are like minded, and then you bolster yourself and, right. and you feel okay, okay, this is right. Because you really, it, it, we really sometimes look at ourselves and say, well, sure hope this works. Yeah. And then you see what what's happening with the kids, and you realize that it does because it's not traditional. They're my nine year old should be learning long division. She's she has no idea, but I really feel I, I I I don't have any vested interest in her learning that right now. I know at some point she'll be ready to do that, or it may fit into something that she wants to do. She'll know she needs to learn X, Y, Z in, in mathematics to atta- obtain that to, mm-hmm. that next level. Level. So um, it's just having that real confidence in what you're doing and that, that, that unconditional love of your kids, which I think doesn't happen um, in the school situation either. You know, it's grades-based, kind of you get that parents really are all talking about how their kids are doing. We really have to just say, hey, you know what, well, however many facts and figures they know, we, we love them. Mm. It's, whatever they're doing is, is great at the time. Right, and then, uh, but the philosophy, having the, the philosophy that you guys put on the airwaves is very important, and you, you get the confidence from that, and you know that it's a, a consistent application of, you know, how adults really learn and how they socialize. Mm. They don't learn and socialize uh, like a public school might want them to, and so it's it's treating kids as, as true individuals and uh and that gives you the strength to know that you're doing the right thing and then to, to plug ahead. And then you, you see the empirical results in your kids just blossoming under this method. And in order to learn, you need curiosity. I mean, you can't, you could shove things down people's throats for a while, but to really learn and to really be creative and to really want to learn, you need to see curiosity first. And I think that's a real important thing for. Uh, unschooling is is to really bite your bite your lip and wait for them to be curious and when they're curious then they'll really they'll go for it as well uh, if there's a why they could find a how so we try to we try to teach them to ask why and ask about something and then and then we could help them uh, really learn about a particular subject absolutely And I think, you know, one thing just from the outside, you know, hearing you both speak about it, one thing that really strikes me is that another thing that um, seems to have been really important is that you both seem to have been really on board um, with with doing this and and have therefore been able to have support from each other. And I'm sure that that must be quite an important part of the process of, you know, I'm sure it would be very different if if one person was you know was up for unschooling and the other person wasn't. You know. Definitely, I think I I've seen that. I come in contact with a lot of homeschooling and unschooling moms, and I do see that a lot. And I think it's really difficult for mm-hmm. them. It's a struggle. Right. Well, I mean, I I think it's um, just fantastic what you're doing, and uh, I really appreciate what you said about the podcast, Matt. Because I, you know, if it, if it helps at all putting the information out, I'm I'm really really happy to hear that, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I think it's great to be able to to get your experience on on this podcast as well. Well, you know, one of the things that I've been learning about, and the kids see us learning all the time, is you know the wisdom of crowds and complexity theory and emergent. Uh, emergence and, and and really what it takes for, for the wisdom of crowds is uh, an independent thinker, uh, a well-informed thinker, and uh, and trust or you know virtue. And the more of those three qualities you have, the small, the smarter and better the answer is of the crowd. Mm-hmm. You know, what better what better way to bring that along than unschooling, where it's very independent. Uh, they get so many words from us from informed adults every day they're not lord of the flies they're they're with adults Mm. and you know we teach ethics i mean we teach don't aggress and and do what you say and the emergent qualities of that if if we could get you know if you could get the word out and we could get the word out you know society is going to be a lot better so that's one of the reasons we came on was to encourage 
you know, we don't usually do this stuff, but we see the importance of getting the word out and, and encouraging others to, you know, have the, the same relate, great relationship and, and as much fun as we're having doing it. Right. So yeah, I do appreciate, I do appreciate what you're doing, Jake. Awesome. Well, thank you. I wanted to ask you another thing that I think could be, um, you know, important for people to consider and maybe even to sort of prepare themselves for. Um, and again, I think this relates a little bit to, to what you were talking about, Molly, with, uh, with regard to, to your friend's comment, is, you know, that I can imagine that um, potentially this type of decision can be quite disruptive of your social life and maybe of the social life of the kids too um, because obviously there is a whole thing that goes with school that you've got the school events and there's the school routine and there's the school trips and there's this, this that and the other and then you also have you know your social life with other parents who have got their kids in school and I wonder if you could talk about you know is that something that people need to be aware of and did you find that uh, you know, it, it created um, difficulties for like people finding your choice challenging to themselves, or, or did it create difficulties with uh, the friendships that the kids have and so forth? Yeah, but it's a, it, it's a good way to um, to sort out uh, who's supportive and who's not supportive. And our kids, they yeah. are. Form, forming such great relationships with the unschooling crowd that we are able to hang out with at, at park days and at cooperatives and such. And uh, our kids are so good at, at seeing and, and talking to and really knowing if a person is, you know, n a nice person to talk to or not. Like they, ha they have very good detect detection mechanisms whereas someone that might be put into a, a public school they can't really choose their who they're going to hang out with you know right lily said lily said that, that it's the best decision that she made she feels like she made the decision you know we asked her do you want to go to public school do you want to do this so, so we give her decisions and they make decisions about which co-op they want to go to and and they didn't like the this particular uh person that was teaching them you know we give we t really talk to them and only only uh, only support and only bring in what people uh, you know that that they like. So um, if you don't mind, yeah. I'll, I think what, what I this kind of speaks to it might, maybe not directly, but what when I talk, we we're pretty social. Matt and I love to be social and hang out with our friends and have people over. It has it it definitely did um, slow that down a little bit, which is actually good. You know, we have two little, two young kids. We, we need to put the focus where the focus is. We still have a lovely social life. You know, we go out on dates together and, you know, we have people over. People are curious now. Our good friends are still going to be our good friends. Some of them think we're crazy, but I think if they see us happy and see us succeeding, they still want to hang out with us and they want to be with us. I think a lot of people probably feel that pressure of, well, that that they should be doing what we're doing if we're doing this. But um, we, we were just, we like to share what we're doing, but, you know, it's obviously not for everybody. I mean, yeah. yeah. And you attract people that are doing it. I mean, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll name him by name, but Joey from uh, Libertopia is actually moving closer to us, and and his daughter is going to unschool and going to be here quite a bit. So I mean, you attract different social circle circles, and uh, when when you make these decisions and you kind of go out there with it, and and you know you have to open up to like the Libertopia. As a matter of fact, Libertopia was about as much fun as our kids had last year it was just so neat that there there were like-minded uh children around and the people they had so much fun with almost all of them so uh, you just have different social circles and uh, more fun and more meaningful relationships right awesome that sounds great i mean i get from what you're saying that you know you, there have been changes in terms with who the kids hang out with and to, to a, maybe to a lesser extent but to who you guys hang out with but that ultimately, you know, I think the point that really came over was what you said about, about it, you, you know, you really see where you're getting support from and you've also been able to build new relationships with people who share your values as well. 
Yeah, the most important relationship is with your children. When Lily used to go to Montessori, we'd go, how's your day? And she'd go, good. Anything ha happen? No. Like, so we, we wouldn't hear and she, they wouldn't. She would actually say, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. And, and now i gotta, I got to convey the story. So I, I was picking her up from a cooperative, and she's out there playing, and I got there, and, and half an hour, they're still playing, they're still playing, and, and I go, wow, they're really having a good time. And then, you know, finally, she came over. I go, well, let's go. And, and so she goes, bye, such and such, to, the, to this boy, and slam the door, and she, and she goes, I love you. And I go, wow. I go, and then so on the way home, I, I said, hey, Lily, um, that's great. You know, what does love mean to you? And so she kind of went through her definition of it, and, and I was all ready. Uh, I go, you know, I was always curious, you know, and I've done a lot of reading in philosophy, uh, and, you know, I have some, uh, some feelings about love. Do you want to hear about them? She said, no. <laughs> and so, I, and so, you, and then you, I, and I, I had to force myself to button my lip about that. But and hopefully, uh, she'll be curious in, in the future about it. But um, anyway, so I mean, she, she has, you know, just uh, and and the boy is just a, such a sweetheart, and he's also being unschooled. So I mean, she's made a wise decision so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> great. <laughs> so. Um, I wanted to ask you, you know, you've, you've gone into this uh, experience as a family together. It's been a year now. What's been the biggest uh, surprise for you about unschooling? I think the degree that people are uh, insecure among themselves when you start talking about what a nice relationship and how happy your child is. I mean, I, it's, I think it's really sad that I, I think, I think there's a deep guilt that people have by um, inconsistencies in their own, own philosophy. You know, saying, you know, don't go along with the crowd, but they're rotely sending them to public school without really questioning. Right. Um, and and you know, they you could like they they kind of want you to fail, and that's surprising. But you know, it, it, the more self knowledge you have, you, then you could have more empathy for for those people who must be feeling so terrible. And so that's why we want to get the word out that, you know, it's, it's, it's something that people can do. Um, and it's natural. It's very natural. Uh, and as a matter of fact, regular schooling is unnatural. So, I mean, it's, we don't need to make the argument. They need to make the argument really. Mm. So that was, that, that's what was kind of surprising to me. And, and just the, it's, what's surprising is how much they grow. Um, Lily wants to play violin. And so I've, found a, a violin teacher and, and we uh, went to lunch with her yesterday and um, we had a, just a very nice lunch and the kids, you know, of course, were great and uh, the teacher pulled me aside and she said, I've never seen, they're, they're like little adults, they're so mature and, you know, and, and so that's a great compliment and uh, when people start to see the results of, you know, talking to children like they're and true individuals, you know, the, re the surprising thing is that they actually will respond. In, and that's been somewhat surprising to me is, is that degree, how, how much they've, act, they've matured and, and how much fun we've had together. Mm. That's fantastic. Have you found, have you been surprised by, you know, the, you know, um, you, you talked about the days being relatively open in terms of, um, you know what you what you're going to do, and have you been surprised by the interests that your kids have have chosen to follow for themselves? You know, have they sort of taken up or been interested in in doing particular activities that that they've had the opportunity to do um, because of the the you know the the freedom that you're giving them? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. You know, we we try to keep the screen time down during quote unquote regular schooling or business hours. <laughs> but um, but when they have their way, you know, they love this game called, called Minecraft. Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, a lot of people you know and you know what it is, but it's it's pretty creative and cool game and they, and they watch YouTube videos based on Minecraft and they're not watching T V or they're into that and then um, just there's this uh, site called alice.org where they can actually make their own 
uh, it's this kind of soft core programming where, you know, it's, you know, I do some programming and it's, you know, object oriented and, and they could uh, use uh, pictures to make their own uh, happenings on, on a screen. So it's, it's really interesting what they will go into given the, uh, given the freedom to do it. Yeah, we did this really, I think it was one of the better things we did at the outset is I did this learning styles test with the kids and we, so that we all, all four of us took it. And the results were pretty shocking and eye-opening and so great because we're, the four of us are so completely different in how we learn and um, take in information. And just our, our learning styles were so, so different, but it was really, really helpful. I think it set us up for being able to unfold like that. That was just a really interesting thing to see how, just how different these little people that we made are from us. Right. And respecting that individual way, you know? Yeah, yeah, so that you can be mindful of the, the fact that they're going to go about things in a slightly different way than you might have done and, and have their own way of learning, so to speak. Completely. It was very helpful. And that's one of the biggest things is to tailor the responses towards the child. You know, it's not a one size fit all it's not standardized testing. It's you know, what is making you happy? What is making you uncomfortable? And how could we help? And and then if they're getting bored, we need we need to help them find challenges. But you know, so far they've they're very good at communicating what they want to do and we we do all we can to to make it happen. Um, Lily's going to play violin, and we never threw that on her. I play guitar and and sing, and and, and it's interesting. I'm not a professional singer, Jake, but you know. But other than that, they just and they they hear the songs, and I try to to play songs that are that are uh, somewhat interesting, and and uh, you know, and, and they'll make comments on on the songs that I play, on the words and stuff. But uh, yeah, it is interesting. Um, you know how they what they want to do and how they pick up things and their their style of learning. I, you know the brain has a path and they it, it gives them signals. You know and, and the biz, biggest signal is is if they're happy, I think we're doing the right thing. And and they have been uh, they're they're very happy kids. Fantastic. Well, I want to um, I want to give you both a chance to you know if there's anything that you think you would like to share with people who are. Um, considering uh, making that move to unschooling, um, you know, if, do you have any thoughts or um, you know, or anything that you would like to share with anybody who's listening to this, who's who's thinking about it? You, you, know, you like to say just do it, but um, you know, but it does take a you know, it, it does take a strong philosophy, and if you, if you just have the mindset that these are little individuals. I'll, I'll just convey another story. I was, I'm reading this book, Brain-Based Parenting. It's a pretty good book. And Lily was reading it too. And, and then uh, she put it down. She goes, yeah, I don't like the way they talk about children. I go, well, oh, why not? She goes, well, they talk, they talk about children as things, like dogs. You know, they don't really talk them like people. And I think that the more you treat them like people and individuals, uh, the better it's going to work out for you and for them, and the more respect that you give them. So, I mean, where where better could you get that other than with with uh, at, you know at home with with your parents and that know them better than anyone and that want them to succeed better than anyone. Right. And I, if you, I'll add in um, just for practical application, <laughs> um, to help me the most. And you will agree because I'm home feeling so much better. Is I did I hooked up with a bunch of different park days, so you get together with some moms and some kids on an afternoon, and I went several of them that did not work at all for me. And then we found one that really clicked, and it was a mixture of homeschooler, traditional homeschoolers, a bunch of unschoolers, a bunch of eclectic homeschoolers. It was a very nice mix, and the moms would sit around and talk, and it was. It, 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 for me, it was so great every once a week that I could connect with these women and find out their stories and get advice. And they were always, I could call them or email them at any time just to, 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 to get a support network going 
no matter how big or small, it, it, I would come home from these days and I was like a new person. Matt mm. would say, wow, you, park day's a good day. Mm. <laughs> you know? So when it gets challenging or when you don't know what to do, there was just endless, endless advice from these courageous, amazing ladies. And that was so helpful for me. Because you, you need to present a relaxed, safe environment for them to really flourish. And, and they could tell if, if you're not feeling confident about it. So right, right. Um, that's, I mean, that's where, you know, these Yahoo groups and reading Holt Gatto and Peter Gray and listening to the, your podcast, School Sucks, you know, Steph's Free Domain, all that, all that helps us to be, be confident and relaxed and really communicate with your children how they feel, how you feel, and listen to them and uh, you know, it seems hard, but the the rewards are are, are great. So that, that's the advice that I would, an encouragement that I give to people. Fantastic! I think that's really, really helpful. And you know, I mean, I, I feel really excited and happy hearing about your experience. Just, just uh, you know, hearing from you guys what what's going on. So it sounds like you're having a, you're all having a fantastic time, and you know, it's just wonderful to hear. Yeah, I mean. Don't get us wrong. There, there are there are moments that we have, um, and deep challenges that we have with you know teaching about honesty and, and non-aggression. You know, they but. But we'd rather do that here and be with them, having those lessons as they come, rather than uh, letting them pass by. I mean, I think it's it's really fulfilling and great. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know, I mean, it's not obviously it's not all. Uh, happy 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 but the point that's not the point i guess the point is it's authentic and so yeah, you know, if you are having um you know a, uh, a a day when you're dealing with a difficult topic with your kids and they're having an experience that that isn't happy for them um at least you can deal with them you can deal with the with that um event uh with them and you can be there with them and uh you know and actually experience it uh, you know authentically together Definitely. There's one little story that just kind of illustrates that the sibling piece is our daughter said she was spending some time with some other kids and then she came home and said, um, you know, I don't think other kids like their siblings as much as Ben and I love each other. It doesn't seem like people really like their siblings at all. And, you know, they definitely fight, but that was a really big an important thing that, that she said. She said, I really love I really love my brother. We really love each other. We really have a good time together. And um, I think we see a lot less of the fighting and, and rivalry than, than I see that out there in the, in the world. Right, right. That's fantastic to hear. Well, um, thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate you, you taking the time. And, uh, yeah, I really want to wish you... Um, very, very best wishes for your ongoing uh, unschooling adventure. Thank, thanks a lot, Jake. Hopefully, you can wish it to us in person per- soon here. Yeah, love to. Hope to hope to get out there again. And I hope I hope one day your uh, unschooling will involve uh, travel because if it does, it'd be great to see you here in Brighton as well. <laughs> Definitely, we love that. We'll take that as. That's an invitation. invitation. It is an invitation. <laughs> it is an invitation, definitely. Great. Excellent. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Dave. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.